It's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> there were some actual swirly moments. Yes. Um, well, you know, um, originally the show was done as monologues out to the audience. And um, in listening to it, I thought uh, I couldn't help but imagine it being done as playable scenes because um, the song not only belongs to the person singing, but to the person receiving it. And it adds a whole other layer to how men and women, or any, any relationships, kind of, you know, we, speak, we sing different songs. We, we sing different languages sometimes in our, in our love affairs. And uh, we uh, worked on backstories for the characters so that when they're listening, uh, and, uh, they're their story is being is being forwarded, uh, their emotional story, and they work very hard on that. I remember, I'm, I'm such a jerk, I should know this, but um, I'm blanking on the name of the director of the original production. A Daisy Prince. Prince. She, came, she came to set one day, the day that we were shooting um, uh, my half of the phone call about Rude. the in together. Rude. made her. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it was... Uh, uh, she was having a sort of out of body experience because first of all she was like Kathy speaks, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know that was new for her, okay. and also she was like she, I didn't know that Kathy would be so artsy, you know, and I forget sometimes that we weren't working from material that dictated all of these things because mm -hmm. my first experience was reading Richard's screenplay, mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see if people. Um, you know, will add their own versions of, you know, because in so many ways they are um, uh, conducive to being um, added to and um, uh, interpreted in very unique ways. And like this isn't, um, you know, for every high school, college, professional production of this, this isn't the definitive version of Kathy and Jamie. And, mm. you know, it was, I took it for granted that we could put ourselves um, and our versions of Kathy and Jamie in the film. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. Um, my question is for Anna. Is, uh, this is like, a, I think it's a, um, the, your character is having a really hard time to do audition, audition. How about yourself as an actress? So what was the worst audition experience for you? Like, how did you overcome this kind of reject? Um, so many terrible. <laughs> I mean, too many to mention. I remember, I remember once for this movie that was like mediocre at best. This screenplay that, to my knowledge, has never been produced. Um, but you know, you know, you audition for things anyway because you know you certainly can't turn up your nose at any work. Um, and there was uh, all these girls and all these boys for you know the sort of two. Um, leads of this kind of coming of age tale and the director wanted us to like dance together but they they brought all of us into a room how horrifying they brought all of us into a room and we had to like dance with each other oh, in front of everyone else and then we had to perform the scenes in front of everyone else That's ridiculous. And it was so oh my god i still, like i still think about it to this day oh. like it's the it's the memory that pops up when i'm about to fall asleep and then i'm just like up until 2:30 in the morning like oh my god cold sweat. So, you know, certainly the lyric 200 girls in, you know, dresses that look just like this are, um, I, you know, I recognize myself very much in that song. How do you overcome? Oh, you know, just a bad bitch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's the thing, though. Clearly, I don't. I'm still up in, you know, in the middle of the night thinking about it. You know, it's like any embarrassing experience that you have. Like, I think it just makes you normal. You know, I don't feel the need to move past it because it's a part of me. And if I didn't have those experiences, you know, I would be unable to relate to other people because I'd be like, what do you mean you were embarrassed? Like, you know, isn't everything wonderful for you all the time? <laughs> um, it's good to have, it's good to be humble. Yeah, shame is good. Shame is good. Self-doubt is good. <laughs> Fear is good. Jared? Uh, congratulations to all of you, Anna and Jeremy. You guys are fantastic. I've already told you that this morning. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, being that this is not your, um, First time at the movie musical rodeo. How um, how difficult is this one in comparison to to the other ones you've done, which first into the woods? Given that, of course, everything's not shot in order. And then with Emmett, you're tracking in different directions. Um, 
Well, in one sense, it was like every other film because every film I've ever shot or likely will ever shoot will be out of order. Uh, it's the nature of things. Um, but at the same time, it, it is um, it is trickier to track where she is, um, especially in. Oh my God! Um, and I'm a part of that where we're like moving. Well, I, yeah, I was saying something that no one else understood and ultimately probably was not a good idea, but <laughs> I, was, I, I was dedicated to having the time go within the song go backwards, which made sense to me, but it was difficult to kind of, because then she opens the flashback. But it also just sort of meant that it was like everybody was just really focused on it. Yeah. You know, it, it sort of, um, it meant that like everybody from Richard to the boom operator was like, no, I'm pretty sure that at this point Kathy's upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a team effort. And I was going to ask you, what is the secret? Oh my God, you're so popular. I'm just going to just pull my wing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the secret to crying and singing without messing with the singing? <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to sing and cry, but obviously you can't really cry or else you're going to mess up the song. So how did you, you do that? Well, um, if I knew the secret, there wouldn't have been so many cases <laughs> I sounded like a fucking dying chipmunk. Um, That's true. Um, I mean, you know, chip, very alive chipmunk. There was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was easier. I mean, I the thing was that I was we were open to the idea of sacrificing a certain amount of vocal quality for performance in still hurting. You know, it's um, that was sort of fine. Um, but then something like, um, see, I'm smiling, you know, by the end of that day, I screeched. I mean, I was absolutely so undone, you, to, you mostly know. Mostly that's where she was. So. Um, so we just had to kind of go through it and hope for the best. And because, you know, in that scene, she is powerful and she is expressing herself. And, you know, we just had to kind of go for it. And then by the end of that day, like, you know, there was mm-hmm. nothing going on <laughs> in the old uh, <laughs> um, throat center. So... I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't have the secret. That was a good job. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Anna, uh, you touched on this a little bit earlier with the, not about the experience of shooting it out of order and, and that, but specifically, I'm uh, thinking of, um, you know, you had uh, the Days of the Woods, and I got uh, this and uh, Fit Perfect 2 coming up. They're, they're all three musicals, but they couldn't be more different in, like, every other aspect. So how do the experiences compare? in doing these movies. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I and I think that um, it's a cute tagline for people to say that it's like I'm doing, you know, all these musicals all in a row, but there's such different movies that they don't feel the same at all. Um, especially because, um, you know, Into the Woods um, was like such this enormous production and, you know, we had the, the time and resources to be perfectionist and you know was very very grateful for that and this was much more a situation that was held together with love and duct tape you know um and that's exhilarating actually um you know if anything i found the waiting on into the woods uh, one of the many challenges and to be on a time budget and to have to stay that focused was incredibly helpful and you know if i'm honest i i prefer this way of working but you know it's just not conducive to telling a story like into the woods so um very, very different experiences, but um, equally rewarding. Uh, Richard, um, I came in not knowing anything about the original cool. material. I was one of those guys. Uh, when I came out of the screening, I told my friends, like, I can't believe you watched it. How is it? Everybody was familiar with the musical. I, I wasn't. Yeah. So my question is, how, how, what, what efforts did you put or approach you put to, uh, to make it inclusive? Uh, and also, uh, you know, when I was watching it, like this Valentine's Day this weekend, I was watching it, you know, not knowing anything about the material. Like, is this a hopeful ending for this couple? I'm, I'm, you know, how do you make it inclusive for the, the people who, haven't, you know, who are not familiar with the, uh, the material, the, uh, the production, I think. the stage? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my goal here was um, to make something uh, that I wanted to make for people, uh, for myself and for people that, that I know love theater. I, I am a geek, yeah. I'm a musical theater, and I know that this score is a classic among us. And nowadays, uh, what I realized uh, with technology uh, changing the business so, so much uh, from when I started. Uh, there are now opportunities where I don't have to appeal to a mass audience anymore. I can make something that's different and uh, risky and take an experiment and do it the way that I want to do it. 
um, uh, because, you know, uh, if I make it for the proper budget, uh, and, and we did, we made it for, for monopoly money, and, and that means, and I know the audience is out there for it. So that gave me the freedom to not, it's why I didn't want to do it, it with any Hollywood involvement. I didn't want people telling me to impose a screenplay on it to make it more accessible to the general public. I'd like the general public to step up and go, this is something, this is something different. And um, people that will like it will like it. People who don't get it will not get it at all. And uh, that's fine with me. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, sorry. I, <laughs> the two of you guys, you both of you played the vocals. And I'm pleasantly surprised at every single song. And so By me, not him. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows. Everybody knows. If both of you could tell us what was your favorite song to sing, and then also the most challenging. Well, I would argue more people have heard you sing than me. Um, so, uh, oh man. Well, the most challenging song for me probably was the the Shmuel song, uh, because we were in a 95 degree apartment in the middle of summer wearing Christmas sweaters, and I was screaming as I was so smelly, and he didn't pretend to like me that day. I was smelly. So smelly. And I had to scream as an old Jewish man after, and then at the same time have, I don't know, probably 20 different props and dressing her and putting bows on her head and using swords made of, did I say swords? Yes. <laughs> swords made of umbrellas. And, oh, God. And then she's just sitting on the bed just making up, uh, on the couch, just making up, making fun of me these entire time. So it was probably one of her, more, probably one of her favorite days, although it was a nightmare. But uh, you know, and uh, so yeah, I was I was pretty fried after that. Um, I really did enjoy doing um, summer in Ohio because it was kind of a fantasy, and it one of the only pieces in the film that's actually like a fantasy. Yeah. Like that's not happening. I'm not dancing on stage with these guys, you know, um, and. And I guess the most challenging probably was the unsmiling, um, mm -hmm. just you know by the nature of it. Um, try, yeah, trying to be honest in that song and also um, trying to sell fees and stuff. With there were some people across that lake that were like, "What the hell is going on over there?" We also had the luck of um, the cicadas. Apparently, they make a migration to Staten Island uh -huh. once every 15 years. <laughs> that Wednesday, they decided to come. And um, I never, this is going to sound like I made a story, but it wasn't because I was freaking out. And on the sound man's chair, there was a cicada, literally. And I, just for a, a joke, just for a goof to the crew, I knelt down and I said, please tell your people, tell your people <laughs> just be quiet. And we wound up not having too bad a time with them. Um, we found out the only way to really stop cicadas is if the temperature drops. So it was later in the day, but it was it was insane. Huh. Uh, and Jeremy, how difficult was it to develop chemistry over just 21 days of shooting, like a very short shooting schedule? We didn't. I I hate <laughs> her. She's the worst. Um, I pretended she was someone else. No. Uh, you know, uh, like anybody who needs to get to know somebody, we went and had drinks and got drunk, and. Uh, <laughs> And told some fun stories about it. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah. Oh, you told me some stuff. I told yeah, you some you stuff. Some stuff yeah. And you know. <laughs> we got then, hurt on each other. So. We got. I was, I mean, it's true. It works both ways. And then you know. And then you go to work. And then then you kind of mine that experience. Uh, that experience. Uh, whenever you have to get intimate. And and then you you learn to laugh shit off too. You learn to just kind of have fun and not take it too seriously. Uh, until you, until Richard makes you do seven takes in a row of yelling at Anna Kendrick, <laughs> and then you're like, I need a hug. <laughs> yeah. Hi Anna, um, terrific performance. Thank you. As always, and I, I was curious because I read that you had you sang the song "Still Hurting" uh, seventeen times. Sure. I ever. I also. Well, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't because of her voice. Most of it was because of the camera. Uh, camera hitting the, the table camera. and doing the thing, and that was really the reason. That's the real problem with movies. The camera. It's the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just find a way to make movies without uh, cameras. cameras were really cool. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And I'm just curious. Um, how do you keep the song fresh for you? Um, having when you have to sing it that many times. <laughs> um. You know, if I um, if I trained at RADA, I might actually be able to verbalize that kind of thing. Um, 
And the fact is, I didn't, and I and I have only ever learned by working, and I've been working since I was a kid, and um, and uh, I I don't know, I you know, uh, I mean, and to 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 um, to try to put it into words would be to destroy the thing, you know, um, and uh, you know, you don't. I guess you try to find a balance between going um, into the material and going to a personal place because you never want to tip it too much in in one direction. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, you know, I feel like I, I drew a lot of energy from the support of the crew who were unbelievably compassionate and understanding and nothing gave me greater um, inspiration than seeing, you know, the um, forty-year-old dolly operator in like his classic Hawaiian T-shirt, like yeah. listening to you know, I could feel him like, you know, he had uh, the same earpiece in his ear that I had, and you know, watching his face as he counted, and I could feel his body like counting, and it's like all these people are honoring a thing that you're trying to do, and that gives you an unbelievable reserve of energy. Right. Uh, so both of your characters at the end of the day make some pretty big mistakes. I just wondered if you found yourself siding with either of them by the end of the week. I think we both side with Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, weak little Kathy. No, um, <laughs> I think I think you find yourself siding with both with both characters. Um, naturally, when you're shooting it, you're you're going to side with your own character because you have to sort of get into the headspace of that person. And even though you know, in, in moments when you know that they're saying something bad or screwing up, you still there's still something behind it. There's still an impetus. There's still there's something that's driving them to to act in that sort of way. So you, you understand them. Uh, the goal was to make it not. Um, my approach was everybody has their reasons. And um, uh, love, uh, this poor thing, put so much pressure on it. It has to be forever. It has to feel like this. It has to feel like this. And I think sometimes love is uh, it's just you have to fall in love with certain people to evolve personally. And it doesn't mean that the love uh, that was lost is a regret. It means it was necessary for you at that time. And I believe they really loved each other. It's just It wasn't just about that. Um, she had an identity that she was being that was being subsumed by his. He was, you know, in, in a new place in his life. Um, they loved each other, and it didn't work out. And how often does that happen to all of us? And everybody has their reasons. Thank you. Um, so Jason Robert Brown clearly wrote an amazing score. Um, what was for all three of you? What was your relationship with his music coming in? Have you ever <clears throat> been in any of his musicals or directed or anything like that? Um, um, I saw Parade when I was 13, and it uh, was and remains my favorite musical. Um, but miraculously, I, I think, you know, one of those kind of weird meant-to-be things, I didn't know this music, um, uh, which I think is fantastic because I didn't have the burden of trying to unlearn someone else's performance, which, you know, if I were to do Parade would be a, a massive undertaking. So it, that worked out really beautifully for me. To, to like know his style and love his style, but not know this material. It's funny, I'm having literally the opposite experience at this very moment. Yeah. <laughs> because I went into this knowing every single word and knowing the original performer's performance and uh, doing and, and having to unlearn every nuance and every sort of vocally, vocally thing that he kind of added to it and trying to make it my own. And, uh, and actually, I'm I'm doing parade right now, and I'd never heard heard it before, so I'm, <laughs> I'm creating it for the first time. Uh, so yeah, I just loved it. I I, 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 I see the original, and Todd Graff is one of my best friends, and and we go to theater a lot and gave me the CD because everybody was buzzing about it after it opened and closed. Um, um, because it opened downtown right after 9/11, so it didn't get it got great reviews, but it didn't get a lot of a lot of people weren't going downtown at that time. So um, I just listened to the score over and over. I was obsessed. When you get a CD, you just can't stop listening to it. That was me with this. Right, time for two more. Any of them? I just want to ask you, you know, this is coming out right before Valentine's Day, day before, I think, right? And uh, to me, it almost seems like an un-Valentine's Day or a great movie to take your significant other to if you're going to break up soon. <laughs> 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 I just want, and, but I mean, I do love all the love 
love and the romance of it, but you know, ultimately it's about how, like you said, relationships, you know, don't always just don't always work out. Right. Um, I don't know if you had anything to do with the timing of release, but you know, how do you see this as a date movie or girlfriend's movie or guy's movie? Okay. I don't. I no. I I, I um. Well, my I think is this weekend, you know, you can have the real hard sex with Fifty Shades, and then you can come and see us and see, you know, what happens after the hard sex. <laughs> uh, you have to actually deal with reality and real people. I'm pretty sure our, our sex in the movie was very PG-13. <laughs> I don't think so. The way she shoves you away, yeah, that's why I think that's Oh, my. Um, wow. So you, had, you guys had tough, you had hard. But, but I mean, you, could, you have both, you know what I mean? Um, but no, is it you know, release dates and all that kind of thing, you know. But uh, uh, I know that when people come to see this, uh, single people and, and I find and, and people in relationships that the movie is reflective of where you are at that time. I showed it to a young uh, friend of mine who hated his character and I, just, I, I, felt, I didn't understand why until I realized she just broke up with a boyfriend. So you project uh, whatever you're feeling onto it and in that way uh, if you're thinking about love on Valentine's weekend and relationships, yeah, it's, it's a great movie to sort of Heard. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's also the movie to go, oh, I'm so glad our relationship is so healthy. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or to walk out and see what he does. That's that, yeah. what you do. Yeah. 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 I've never been able to articulate it until now. Now. <laughs> We're going to watch that again. Yeah. You know, you see, like, all these love... If love you're going to break up, this movie will speed it along. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're meant to be... You can survive this exactly. movie. Exactly. Yeah. But then, you know, love, love has so many different facets to it, though. And, and even... The typical uh, Valentine's Day movie is going to have ups and downs. Generally, ends it happy. Ours just doesn't. And but that doesn't mean that there isn't a massive amount of love. I would argue it. that our movie has a happier ending than Fifty Shades. I, <laughs> I, 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 How does that I haven't end? Read, I, haven't read I have read that book. It yeah. ends with her like. It, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Ever? I don't know if you guys. They've all seen it. Uh, he banged her too hard and she leaves. Which is true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> right, one non question. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about your Oscar performance coming up? Can you start rehearsing? Are you nervous? I uh, have not started rehearsing. Um, I couldn't divulge secrets if I tried because it was described to me very vaguely. And, you know, and so I. They were like, don't tell anyone. And I was like, I don't even know what you're describing. So, <laughs> can't wait.